this is going to be set up for dad gag. So there's a bunch of things that need to be done to get this to line up. Let's have a look at the lay of the neck. We will definitely need to dress here. He sees a bit of a wobble yeah, all the way across. As always, I will check the truss rod just to make sure it's functioning properly. I know he had some trouble with that last layer of it. He did not mention anything about the truss rod being a problem on this one. Custom made for the 12th fret in Toronto. It's a pro shop in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. An OM-03RSH is the model. So once again, this is going to be set up for Dad Gad. Well, I did adjust that truss rod, and we got this portion of the neck. The lay of the neck is actually good. But again, you come up to here, and whoo, we got a major speed bump here. This whole area needs to be taken care of. And that's exactly what we're about to do. So, one last check here. You hear that? I'm not going to waste any time here. We're going to cut right to the quick. And this is where the issue is. Now, I recently had one of my uh, YouTube subscribers mention that he's really had some grief uh, trying to he's sort of trying to get the buzzing issues out of some of his guitars, and um, it's hard to diagnose it at a distance. But one thing I did mention, and I have mentioned this before in other videos, is when I was teaching the classes, I would have six students per class, four classes per week. We'd be doing exactly this type of work that I'm showing you right now. And I would buy these single cut, six inch single cut, fine mill bastard files, cut the rat tail off, glue it to a jointed hardwood block. I've been doing it for 25 years. That's still not enough to get you the precision you want because you always need to move obliquely when you file. And if you don't, like if I just do this, then I'm going to leave the footprint of the file in the top of the crown. And that's why you always need to move obliquely when you're leveling a fingerboard. The frets are not straight, they have a curvature. And you need to follow that curvature. Now I know that uh, this guitar literally had cobwebs in it, so it tells you that, you know, he wasn't able to play it. His much less expensive Larrabee was his go-to guitar because he liked the sound of it and he could play it. This one really needed some help. Well, now that all of the fret issues are taken care of, buffed, polished, no snags, no jags, smooth as silk, laser straight, we'll put this action anywhere we want it. Now we can get on with the rest of the job and set this guitar up for maximum playability and perfect intonation. 
So that's my cantilevered saddle blank out of bone. I did put a little thin veneer of rosewood to get a perfect press fit. I, I also radius that to match the radius of the uh, crown of the bridge. So that just kind of presses into place. Now what I have here is the original saddle. So from this map that I've made up, I've made a tracing onto the nut blank, the bone nut blank, uh, based on these values. This is a radius for a fingerboard that I've used for something completely unrelated, but I'll use that to make my tracing for my cantilevered compensated bone nut blank. Now that's the first cut I'm going to make. So. That is that elliptical cut that we just made. You can see that the focal point for the B string is deep into that saddle. I don't want to disrupt this radius because this matches our fingerboard radius. We're chasing that B string to the back edge of the blank. Not pretty good with that. Now we're going to roll off the back edge. I Everything is now calibrated for that dad gad tuning. So as I lower that, I am going to chase it forward a little bit. This dad gad guitar with 13 to 56 medium strings is fully calibrated. So I'll bring you in for a look at this saddle. That is our compensated saddle. And this is our compensated nut. If you remember what the action was like at the beginning of the video, well, it is smooth as silk now. Perfectly in tune, end to end, string to string, fret to fret. And there's the treble side. No stone left unturned with this one. Everything that needed to be done has been done. Ken can just relax and finally play this guitar. There's our compensated nut and our level dressed and polished frets and that is the compensated cantilevered bridge saddle for the dadgad tuning <laughs>
Here's uh, Pierre Ben Susan when you need him. <laughs> That's probably the first time in 20 years I've played in Dad Gad. Um, when I go to alternate tunings, I always try and search for some sort of familiar ground. So the two middle strings remain to be D and G. So I can actually play thirds. <laughs> And I can also play thirds with the fourth and fifth string, or A and D string. So that's all I'm doing, kind of monkeying around with thirds, sort of the one common thread <laughs> that I have with uh, regular tuning when using this dad gad. But uh, anyway, so there we go. So th and that's essentially what I'm doing. stumbling dad gad lesson. And of course you got all the open. fun with this thing than he ever has up to this point. <laughs>